Mining sites are not for people with weak hearts. There, bomb blasts every now and then, and the giant machines roar with their powerful engines. One such monstrous machine is the CAT 7495. This rope shovel weighs more than 50,033 US tons and stands taller than 65 feet, which is equal to the height of a five-story building. Operating such a large machine is a challenge in itself. The rope shovel takes four megawatts of electric power to work, and the operator has to timely fill two ultra-large dump trucks, which consume gallons of fuel in minutes. So, each movement of these beasts costs a chunk of money, and miners count every pass. But despite all that, a rope shovel is considered the lowest cost per ton solution for large open pit mines. One reason is its large dipper. The CAT 74 95 rope shovel can be equipped with a dipper ranging from 40 to 82 cubic yards. It cuts the hard rock and can scoop up more than 120 short tons of payload in a single pass. With the 82 cubic yard dipper, this rope shovel can fill a CAT 797 in just three passes. Like its companion machine, the CAT 797 is one of the largest dump trucks on Earth with a payload capacity of 400 short tons. From digging to delivering material on a dumper, a rope shovel does its job in four steps. In the first step, the dipper is pulled up to cut the material. In order to do this, the rope shovel pulls the hoist rope with its high torquey gear system powered by electric drives. The dipper does not just move upward, it is pushed forward by the dipper handle, which results in an arc-shaped loading profile for better digging. This movement is known as crowding. Likewise, the dipper handle moves back, which is known as retracting. Typically, a rope crowd system is installed for crowding and retracting. It comprises a motor, brake and gear system, but to enhance the performance and longevity of the CAT 7495, Caterpillar has designed a new crowd system, the Hydro Crowd. Instead of controlling the dipper handle with different components, they built a new dipper handle with a tube-enclosed hydraulic cylinder that operates like a hydraulic piston. This advancement eliminated routine crowd or retract rope changes and extended a major maintenance time to two years. Next, the rope shovel rotates horizontally to deliver the material to the dump truck. It is called the swinging phase, and the rope shovel can only do that because of its swing rack system. The CAT 7495 has a completely casted 17-foot diameter swing rack, weighing up to 45,000 pounds. Connected via pinion shafts and gearbox, two vertically mounted motors simultaneously engage the swift to rotate the upper carriage. Other than rotation, a swing rack bears the inertia of the upper body and its movement. After rotating its dipper over the dump truck, the trip cable is pulled up. It unlocks the door to discharge the material. A standard dipper has a latch system that locks the door with a latch bar when the dipper gets filled with material. Likewise, the latch bar has to be pulled out to unlock the door. Moreover, the locking and unlocking components of a standard dipper are located on the bottom of its door. Thus, the material being mined directly damages and causes the opening or closing of doors to fail. CAT engineers effectively dealt with this problem by redesigning a new dipper for their CAT 7495 rope shovel. All of its locking and unlocking components, such as the link assembly, camshaft, outboard support, and trip arm, are on top. Because of the over-center angle between door geometry and the link assembly, the dipper's door gets locked. It closes by gravity as the dripper is lowered. To unlock the door, the trip button is activated, which rotates the camshaft, pushing the link up and unlocking the door. Lastly, the dipper is returned to the dig face to take more material. On average, an experienced rope shovel operator completes a dig cycle in 28 to 80 seconds. Ideally, an operator must ensure minimal shovel hang time by optimizing the shovel swing angle. However, accomplishing this ideal load cycle is not easy, as the efficiency and safety of haul trucks maneuvering at shovels, crushers and dumps vary dramatically with operator skill. 
Moreover, the lack of available and recruitable skilled operators further complicates the variability of operator capability across a mine site. As a result, standard operating procedures are adopted at open pit mines to ensure safe mining and cost-effective production. There are primarily four loading methods for a rope shovel, each with advantages and cons. Generally, the single backup loading method is praised for its simplicity and safety. The dump truck in reverse gear approaches the shovel from one side. The shovel fills its dipper from the farthest point and loads the dumper. Then it takes the second pass nearest to the dump truck and the final load is scooped up from the middle point. Working this way reduces swing time. This loading method is considered best for restricted areas but the rope shovel has to wait for the arrival of another dump truck. This is why, in vast open pit mines, miners prefer the double backup loading method. After loading the first dump truck, the electric rope shovel fills another on the opposite side. A dozer can be deployed to clean up on one side while loading continues on the other side. Trucks can be positioned to load during their waiting period, reducing shovel loading delays. However, it is not always possible to place two dump trucks as required. And, because the rope shovel's operator cabin is on one side, the operator has to rely on a camera system to fill the dumper standing on the opposite side. This increases the probability of an accident. So, in the drive-by loading, the rope shovel's tracks are aligned parallel to the wall. This method is widely adopted at coal mines. The rope shovel has to rotate 180 degrees to load the dump truck. This results in long swing angles. The modified form of the drive-by loading method involves positioning the dump truck while loading to reduce the swung time. To do this, greater truck driver skills are required, as there is a risk of an accident by swinging the shovel's boom bucket with a dumper, because the shovel starts loading while the dumper is in motion. However, expert handling is not enough to meet the cost-effectiveness of rope shovels. Technology plays a crucial role in making rope shovel operations more efficient and profitable. For instance, a typical rope shovel uses approximately 8 megawatts of power provided by multiple generators via electric cables. Harnessing such a tremendous amount of electrical energy is impossible without an effective power management system. At mining sites, they deploy electrical networks, especially for electric rope shovels. This adds the additional task of installing and removing the electric cable during blast times and the working time of the rope shovel. Moreover, in double backup loading, a tower or pole system is placed so the dump truck can go across without damaging the electric cable. In addition to that, mine owners cannot afford electricity disruption which may cause accidents if not just unexpected downtime. Moreover, the more the number of generators are used, the more maintenance and fuel cost is required. All that and the increasing demand for more cost-effective solutions led to a 44% decline in Caterpillar's earnings. The company answered these issues with its power demand management system for CAT 7945. Instead of an 8 megawatt grid power, the CAT rope shovel was run on two megawatts CAT gensets. These gensets can be towed to the working area during operating time and moved to a safe place by the electric rope shovel they run. Most importantly, this power management system includes ultra capacitors that are installed on the roof of the rope shovel. These devices retrieve energy created during swing deceleration and bucket lowering. The rope shovel uses the retrieved energy during periods of high demand, which also helps generators gradually ramp up, ensuring reliable and cost-effective performance. However, using electricity for rope shovels was not always the case. The very first generation of rope shovels was powered by a steam engine. In this regard, an American manufacturing company, Bucyrus Erie, became famous. In fact, their steam engine rope shovels were used to dig out the Panama Canal in 1904. Originally, the project was given to the French in 1881, but they faced failures and ended up losing it. 
Knowing the strategic importance of the Panama Canal, Americans took great interest in constructing it. Torrential rains, scorching heat, and epidemic disease welcomed Americans to dig out 51 miles from the land of Panama. Busiris Erie relocated its manufacturing facility to South Milwaukee. All the steam engine rope shovels for the Panama Canal were built there. In total, 77 steam-powered rope shovels were built, and the largest of them was a 95-ton rope shovel capable of scooping up 8 tons in just one dig cycle. The company built a total of 32 95-ton rope shovels, along with 2070-ton and 1045-ton rope shovels. At that time, rail lines were the most reliable and efficient solution for transport. Miles of railway lines were laid to transport the equipment as well as the dugout material from the working area. The rope shovels had to fill the cargo train in little time because every minute and a half another rail had to arrive. Day and night, these engineering marvels kept working and the day came after 10 years when the last spoilage was dug out in 1913 by the Busiris 222 and 230. Perhaps the most historical moment in this project was the visit of the American president, Theodore Roosevelt, who likely could not resist going inside a Busiris rope shovel. In 1963, Busiris made another mark on history by building the world's second largest rope shovel, the Big Brutus. It took $6.5 million and almost a year to build this titan that stands as tall as a 16-story building. This big Brutus is now a museum, where tourists come to witness its remarkable engineering. The company that made many marks in history had to be sold to Caterpillar in 2010. With that, Caterpillar rebranded the Busiris rope shovels with their classic yellow color. The original name of this rope shovel was Busiris 945. Now, it is known as Cat 7945. Caterpillar, as a leading mining manufacturing company, did not just rebrand the Bucyrus products. They developed ingenious technologies to meet the mining conditions. Out of the many challenges, mining equipment faces a harsh environment. The temperature could range from freezing minus 44 centigrade to scorching 55 Celsius, depending on the geolocation of the mining site and the environmental season there. Climate change has made this challenge more severe for the manufacturer. Thanks to the proven AC-IGBT electric drive system, the CAT 7945 can keep working whether it is minus 40 or extremely hot at 50 degrees. The IGBT stands for Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. This transistor technology is designed to control the speed of AC drives. They also react faster than fuses and eliminate potential points of failure. Many mines in the world are in the desert. The abrasive nature of the sand causes damage to the shovel's tracks, increasing its wear and tear and reducing efficiency. High temperatures in deserts also affect the metal and other materials used in the tracks, possibly leading to thermal expansion and more stress on the components. For the desert, Caterpillar introduced a new model of rope shovel, the CAT 7495HF. It has a high flotation undercarriage designed specifically for desert environments. The undercarriage features thermal stress-relieved crawlers and structures to eliminate residual stress, ensuring long-term reliability. Moreover, the CAT 7495 uses a dual-motor independent drive system for the track's propulsion. This allows for precise control and movement of the shovel, which is critical for the accurate positioning of the machine during mining operations. The design includes upward-slanted propel motor shelves to protect against debris, and an elevated drive tumbler to shield the planetary drive from ground impact shocks, all contributing to the machine's robust performance and longevity in demanding environments. To ensure the safety of the machine as well as the operator, the CAT 7495 is packed with a lot of safety features. The rope shovel welcomes the operator with easy access boarding stairs located at the right rear of the machine. Then the operator walks on the non-slip walkways. Handrail mounts reinforce the structure and offer safe access to the cab. The cab is designed to be as ergonomic as possible for the operator. 
it offers an unobstructed view out of the left and right-hand windows with anti-glare windshields. Also, a floor window allows the operator to keep an eye on the machine tracks. There are five cameras optimally positioned around the shovel so that the operator can watch blind spots on five 10-inch displays mounted just above the windshield in the cab. These cameras can endure shocks and vibrations, as well as severe temperatures. They have SLR glass to optimize pictures in sunlight and low light. During an emergency event, the operator can de-energize the motion control system using the emergency stop button. Instead of one, the operator's cab has two exit doors and the door at the rear leads straight to the unobstructed stretcher. Besides, a pull-down ladder is on the left side for emergencies. Caterpillar has designed heavy-duty brakes for a particular hoist application. They feature advanced organic friction material that not only eliminates the burnishing requirements, but also reduces the occurrence of variation in brake torque. Without being damaged, these brakes can stop a fully loaded dipper in full motion. This helps in minimizing the risk of an uncontrolled dipper drop. Moreover, the CAT 7945 has a separate cabinet for high voltage located at the rear. This cabinet can only be accessed when the power is disconnected. In case any unauthorized attempt is made to access the cabinet, it gets automatically disconnected from the main power. Likewise, the rope shovel has a motor-controlled cabinet on the left side. It offers independent circuit control and isolation for the main component of the machine. To build the rope shovel, every component is brought to the assembly site with the utmost care and placed at strategic locations to make the installation process easy. The assembly team starts with the undercarriage. The crawler frame is jacked up to place track rollers underneath it. Next, two cranes lift the swig rag to mount it with the undercarriage. It contains rolling devices that offer smooth machine rotation. Then, the team installs two heavy-duty electric drives at the front end of the undercarriage. These electric drives roll the track rollers. After building the undercarriage, the process of machinery room assembly begins. This part of the shovel houses almost every crucial component of the machine, including various electric cabinets, safety devices, motors, and gear systems that run the shovel. Special attention is given to the electronic control unit. Assembling every part one by one meticulously by skilled engineers takes weeks. Subsequently, the upper carriage is closed with a roof. The roof comprises various mounted components, including the cab. Likewise, the front part of the rope shovel is assembled, which includes the boom, the pulley system and the A-frame. With the installation of its 65-foot-long and 13,000-ton boom, the structure starts taking the shape of a rope shovel. To erect the boom and support it, they mount the A-frame on the roof of the machine. Lastly, the dipper and its gate system are assembled. After mounting the dipper, they combine the dipper stick and the hydraulic crowd system. Each and every piece is tested before commissioning the rope shovel. Ferreros is one of Caterpillar's dealers, headquartered in Lima, Peru. They have built more than 20 such rope shovels there, and so far no accident has been recorded. For this project specifically, the Ferreros professional team dedicated an average of more than 32,000 work hours to each assembly. The CAT 7945 is the largest machine in Peru, and it is not just a machine, but a relentless pursuit of technological progress. Its steel arms have moved mountains of treasure and may continue restlessly in the future. The rope shovel has an inspiring history, a useful present, and a bright future. It is truly an engineering marvel on which everyone involved must take pride. Such marvels have shaped our history, and they continuously shape our future. We take pride in featuring these handcrafted machines and educating you as much as possible. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. 
Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.